and football fans, a pleasant, great Friday evening from Moore Stadium in Everett for tonight's Rock Ridge football game against the Duluth Denfield Hunters. Hello again, everyone. I'm Bob Cohn. Nice to have you joining me tonight from Moore Stadium. Denfield comes in, they're winless in their first two games. In fact, they've only scored two, six points in two games. They lost at Esco 37 to nothing, and then at home last week, they were beaten by Cloquet 42 to six. Meanwhile, the Blue Devils are one and one. They beat the Northwoods 20 to 14 last thir or a week ago, Thursday night, and then last Friday night, they went to Two Harbors and really lost a uh, disappointing 13 to 12, a very controversial end to that game. And hopefully the Blue Devils can regroup tonight, get back on the winning ways against Duluth Denfield. Again, these are the Rock Ridge Wolverines, and I'm hoping to try to stay away from Blue Devils and also Golden Bears that I've said for 42 years. So you have to bear with me tonight. First time seeing the Wolverines. They're in their home green uniforms with the black helmets, the white numerals, while Denfeld comes in with the maroon pants with their white uniforms, white jerseys, and their maroon tops. Rock Ridge will receive the opening kickoff and they'll go from south to north back deep to receive. Uh, we'll check these numbers out. Again, all new numbers. First time I've seen this team play. Looks like 24 is the deep one for the Wolverines. He's number 24. Again, the Wolverines will go from our south to north as the sun is setting in the west. Beautiful crowd here tonight. Lots of green and black. This is Wolverine football. And the Wolverines come in one and one. And here's the kick, it's short. It's gonna go out of bounds and the Wolverines are gonna start at the 35 yard line if that's the option they'll take. Again, you've got three options. And I think they're gonna take the 35 yard line. That would be the best option. We'll check the starting lineups. Uh, they'll go with two wideouts, uh, Gavin Dahl 21 and Griffin Krempetich number four. The tight end is 33, Will Bittman. Their left tackle is Carter Flanagan. The left guard is Wesley Holcomb. The center is Jonah Looney. The right guard for the Wolverines, 57, is Riley Krenz. The right tackle, 62, Ian Lukin. Griffin Dolshin will start. He's a junior quarterback. Wolverines will take over first and 10 on their own Jake Burris, 34. Ryan Mandanen. And they'll go with two wide out to the left. Mandanen is the wing back from the shotgun. In motion comes Burris, quarterback keeper, and he's going to go down behind the line. Doshin falls on his own fumble. Loss of about four, it'll be second and 14. Back to about the 31 yard line. Number 19, Preston Rodberg will bring the play in. Second and 14, just underway on this Friday night. Week number three, high school football. Herberg is a motion man. Coming this way is Burris. He gets slowed down and gets knocked down just short of the 35 yard line. So it's gonna be third and about 11. Third and long for the Wolverines, and now Dahl will go out wide. Passing situation. Here's Dojan throwing the ball over the middle to Bittman, a completion, it'll be first down near midfield. That's a 15 yard gain and a first down for the Wolves at the 49 yard line. Ball on 
initial first down. Manning is the wing back. He'll come in motion. We got some movement on Rock Ridge. It'll cost him five. First penalty in tonight's game. First and 15, they move the ball back to the 45 yard line. In motion, getting the hand of coming this way is Mandanin. He needs a block on the edge. And Mandanin is going to get taken down inside the 30 yard line. That's about a 23 yard gain in a first down. First and 10 at the 27 yard line. Here's a quarterback keeper, Dojan going to the right side. He's got some running room and he's going to go down inside the 15 yard line. So the last two plays have netted 40 yards and it's first down at the 15 yard line. 9.02 to go in the opening quarter. Dojan again from shotgun burst and Dojan drops the snap and he'll cover it up. Ball will be put back around the 19. Second and a 14 for Rock Ridge. You're viewing tonight's telecast on MasabiCommunityTV.com and also Mediacom Public Access Channel 5. Here's handoff to Mandanin and he gets taken down after a very short game. A little misdirection play, fake it one way. Mandanin comes from the wing back position and the play only goes for a yard or so. Third and 12. Ball's on about the 17 yard line. Have to get to about the seven. Nice to see the sun setting in the west. Be able to see the monitor a lot easier. Here's Dojan from the shotgun. Rolling, looking down, throwing the ball underneath and Intended for Mananin, and it is incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Tyler Brennan defensively, a freshman on the coverage. Fourth and about 12. Mandon is set up at a wing back, too wide on the left side. Here's Dojan throwing the ball deep, and it was not sure where it was intended for, but it's incomplete. And the ball will be turned over on downs to the Denfeld Hunters. So the Wolverines had about a 47 yard drive to open up their first possession and now Hunters will start first and 10 from their own 17 yard line. Eric Lofold is the head coach. Looks like it's Caden Polstow is the quarterback. He was a good hockey player for the Hunters. Had a very good hockey season last year. Came up a little bit short. They spread the field. Now we got some movement in the backfield. And it'll move the Hunters back five. Ball start on the Hunters. 
So they'll put it back to the 12-yard line. 7.29 to go, first quarter. No score, Rockridge and Duluth Denfield. Again, the Hunters will spread the field wide outs on both sides. Here's Postal handing off the first man through, trying to go to the right side and not much at all. A lot of green jerseys in on the stop. Ball carrier was Carter Kilroy. He gains about a yard. It'll be second down and 14. It's nice, our press block has cooled off from about 90 degrees to 80. Here's Postal handing it off, and the first man through again gets only a yard. So, so far the interior of the defense has stuck the Hunters with the first two plays. Third down and about 14 yards to go. First quarter from Moore Stadium in Eveleth on this Friday night. And again, the Hunters with wideouts on both sides. Backs are split in a pro set. Postal short drop. Now he's running to the right side, looking downfield, throw the ball, leap downfield, and oh boy, almost a great catch. How did that man get behind the secondary? And it's fourth down, and the Hunters will probably punt the ball away. Dropping back for Rock Ridge is the sophomore Ryan Herberg. Number 42, Owen Hinderman back to punt for the Hunters. Herberg High snap, the and the punt is away. Very short, and it takes a Wolverine bounce, and they're going to start at the 36-yard line of Duluth Enfield. So great field position for the Wolverines. Working the game tonight is the Greg Staniker officiating crew. Dozier from the gun gives it off to uh, Burris, the first man, or check that, yeah, it is Burris, and he'll get to about the 25 yard line. And that will be a first down. That play goes for 10. So the play is a first down for the Wolverine. That's the fourth first down for Rock Ridge. Ball is actually just inside the 25. Dojan, quarterback keeper, left side. And he's going to get around the corner. Dozier running down the sidelines and gets forced out of bounds. It looks like it's inside the five-yard line or awful close to just inside the five. Let's see where they'll mark it. Looks like first and goal from about the seven-yard line. Man comes in motion. He'll get the handoff coming this way. And it's a touchdown. Touchdown. 
23 is Ryan Mannanen scoring another touchdown for the Wolverines. And with 5.13 to go in the opening quarter, Rock Ridge goes on top 6 to nothing. Now they'll try by placement, point after touchdown. Looks like it's Dylan Headley is going to kick. Dojan will hold. The snap is good. The ball is down. The kick is up, and it is not good. Kick is no good. Line right. So as the teams head back upfield, we'll take a break. We'll come back with more football from Evleth after this timeout. When you're searching for a delicious meal that the whole family can enjoy, count on the experience and flavors of the Rink Sports Bar and Grill. As a locally owned and operated business, we have been proudly serving the entire area and our customers with only the highest quality of service and food that you need to take on the day. Dine in style and fun when you check out our trivia nights, darts, pool tables, 60-inch TVs, all while you munch on tacos, burgers, and more. Stop by today. There you watch on the replay, there's uh, Doge in the ball carrier. And here we go, kickoff with 5.11 to go. Headley will kick off for Rock Ridge. Oh, beautiful, the sun is finally setting in the west. And I'll tell you, it's been so warm in here. My throat is already dry. First game. Here's Headley approaching the ball. Nice line drive kickoff. It was touched. It's picked up, and it's going to be returned out to about the 37-yard line. James Tolman in on the stop for Rock Ridge. I'm Bob Cohn. Steve Rockel is down in the truck. Darwin Aller is up on top of the press box here, bringing you all the action tonight on Public Access Channel 5 and MasabiCommunityTV.com. We'll be back here again next Friday night as North Branch will be in town, a very strong North Branch Vikings team. But right now at hand is the Duluth Denfield Hunters and Rock Ridge with a six nothing lead. Wide outs on both sides, Caden Postal. Postal rolling out to the right, looking downfield, throwing it, and it was caught by the back coming out. 44, that's Taylor Shikes. Play goes for about nine. Second down in a yard. Six nothing on Ryan Mannanin's touchdown run. Here's Postal on a quarterback keeper and a nice run before he gets forced out of bounds at the Wolverines 39 yard line. About 12 yards and a first down. That's the initial first down for Denfield. Ball's on the right hash mark. Again, they go with wides on both sides. Now the slot man, that Shikes, will come back and set up on this side. And 
Rock Ridge wants a timeout. Timeout Wolverines, that's their first charge timeout of the first So we got a timeout on the field, 403 to go here in our opening quarter. 6-0 for the Wolverines, and we'll have more football action after this. I decided to come to Masabi because you get that one-on-one -on -one experience with your instructors, and I'll leave Masabi with literally zero debt. And for what I'm going into, I just thought it was the smartest decision, and then I could also continue playing the sport at level of baseball. Definitely the fact that I could play baseball here helped a lot with meeting people and met a ton of cool kids, so I have no regrets. It's been a great decision. <laughs> my name's Cody, and this is my Masabi story. <laughs> Here we go, coming out of the Wolverines timeout. First and 10 from the 39 yard line. High snap, Postal looking downfield, throwing the ball long downfield, and it is caught! And a touchdown for the Hunters, but we got a flag, and it's probably gonna be a interference, but this could go against the Hunters. Hughes may have pushed off to get uh, position. And I think that's what the call is going to be. They're going to bring this one back. He was pushed off on Gavin Dahl. So that's the second penalty on the Hunters, and they'll march off the yardage from the 39. They'll put it back near midfield. What if we see that uh, replay once again down in the truck? Nope, not that one. Here comes the pass. Let's see. We're probably not going to be able to get the push off. Yep, we can't get the push off. But Gavin Dahl did have good position. Two fouls on the play. Holding on Denfeld and offensive pass interference on Denfeld. So it'll be a 10-yard penalty from the hold is what they'll probably take. That was at the 44-yard line. Now they'll go back to the 46-yard line. Hunters have the ball back in their own end. Three fifty-five to go. Quarter number one. Six nothing. Rock Ridge on Ryan Manninen's seven-yard touchdown run. Hunters will have it first in about 25. Four wide, two on each side. Here's Postal, short drop, throws it underneath and a great defensive play. That was Jake Burris with the play. Shikes makes the catch. Gain of only about three. Burris with a great defensive play. Second down and long. And again, the Hunters with the same formation. They'll go two wide on each side. Postal, short drop, getting some pressure. Now he just dump it off, short, nice play. Coming up is Manninen with the play. Postal's pass is complete to number 25, Carter Kilroy. 
Carter Kilroy with the reception. So the play was good for 11. It's going to be third and 11. Ball sitting on the 40-yard line. Left hash mark. Hunters going from north to south. Again, too wide on each side. And now we have a flag, which usually means a legal procedure. Oh, it's called delay of game, so they'll move them back five. Delay of game on the Hunters. Bring up a third and about 16. Hunters with three penalties on this possession. Postal with a short drop, throwing the ball long downfield, and it is intercepted. That was Headley with the interception. So the Wolverines with the turnover will get a first and 10 from inside their own five yard line. So that's Probably as good as a punt with 146 to go in our first quarter. Wolverines starting deep in their own end. Griffin Dojan is the quarterback. Wing back and here's a handoff. First man through it. Looked like it was Herbert. Check that. I thought it was 24. Maybe it's 34. It was 34. That's Jake Burris. Gets out to the 10, a gain of 5. 53, Jacoby Wynn. Junior in on the stop for Duluth Enfield. Second down and 5. Wolverines deep in their own end, but... Trying to move out after a nice defensive play by Dylan Headley. Now offside, and it's going to give the Wolverines a first down. Unless they were drawn off. Let's see. Nope, it's against Denfield, so that'll be the seventh first down for Rockridge. Offside on the Hunters. Should be a first down with where the ball is being marked. Well, they're taking a look. They may have to bring the chains out. No, I think now they're saying first down. Result of the penalty is the first down for the Wolverines. First and 10 on their own 15 yard line. So this will be the 14th play for the Wolverines here in the first quarter. And Dojan from the shotgun. He's got a double wing formation coming this way. A quarterback now keeping, and he's going to only get back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, it was a great fake to Burris. I thought he was coming this way. We'll give Dojan a yard. Gavin Dahl will bring the next play in. 40 seconds to go in the opening quarter. 6-0 Rock Ridge. Again, the double wing. In motion comes Burris. He's come, oh, he dropped the ball. Now he'll pick it up. And he's going to try to get to the edge and gets knocked out of bounds hard near the 18-yard line. Well, that was Mandan. Mandan around right end. Oh, watch that replay again. Ryan just lost control of it, but quickly picks it up. A great bounce. 
And then with his speed, he gets to the edge before he gets knocked out near the 18-yard line. Twenty-one seconds to go in our opening quarter. Six nothing Rock Ridge. Now the Wolverines will have wide outs on both sides. Dojan from the gun. Handoff. Ball carry coming this way. That's Burris. I think. Burris on the carry. Sixty-four. Burris got about three. And it'll be fourth down, and the clock is going to run out before we have the Rock Ridge punt. We'll take a break. One quarter in the books. It's Rock Ridge 6 and Duluth Denfeld 0. The way I came to Giants Ridge is my, my grandparents were born and raised in this area. And my wife and I, at the time, were living in the Houston area and wanted to get out of the city and see something different. And the job opening was there, and I was fortunate enough to get the job, and everything has kind of fell into place since then. I enjoy playing in the early mornings at Giants Ridge. Both courses have areas where the fog will hang low, and the setting dew, and just the fresh cut grass, it's, it's something every golfer looks forward to and those fortunate enough to have that first tee time uh, savor it. We have a great advantage with our staff and the employees that we uh, work with at Giants Ridge in that they take a lot of pride in not only the facility as a whole but the job and it, the details that they perform in their job and how that fits into the big picture. We want to put out the best product we can on a daily basis because we realize not everybody that visits our facility is going to be back the next week, the next month. So we're trying to put our best foot forward every day because that may be our guests only visit this year. It comes through to our customer that we love the facility and love the product that we put out every day. I'm John Kendall, and this is how I help make giant memories. So, so as we start our second quarter, a punt was away, and the Wolverines down in at the 40-yard line. So that's where Denfield will start their next possession. Trailing six to nothing. Now they'll go from south to north. They had nine plays in the first quarter while the Wolverines had 16. Man will go in motion and now we've got a penalty. We've got a legal procedure. Fourth penalty. On Duluth Denfield. So they'll move him back to the 35 yard line. Handoff ball carry come this way, no place to go at all. That's a backside. Boy, getting there quickly was 53, Brandon Pionk, the senior. Loss of about two. Second down and about 17. Now the Hunters will bring wide outs on both sides, two on each side. Caden Postal from the shotgun. Short drop. Now he's looking under some pressure. He's going to go down. 
And the ball came out, but they're going to rule it down. Will Bittman got in there quickly. And the loss goes back to the 30. It's going to be third and 20 for Duluth Denfield. So far, Duluth Denfield has shown nothing offensively. But give credit to that defense of Rock Ridge. They've been rock solid so far. Postal from the gun. He's got trips on the left. That's the wide side of the field. Short drop under some pressure again. Still looking and now Burris stripped it and we'll see who's got the ball. It may belong to Rock Ridge. Officials in there and they say, no, the Hunters did recover. So another loss of about six. From the Hunter 24 yard line. And it's fourth down and dropping back will be Herberg to receive this kick. For the Hunters, Herberg back for the Wolverine. Snap is good, punts away. Short, Herberg picks it up his own 45 and goes back to the 42 yard line of Duluth Denfield. Good return and once again, Rock Ridge with great field position. Watch on this replay, fields it nicely, clean, and just goes right between three hunters. It was the third one that made the tackle. comes Krempetich out wide left. Now we've got offside is going to be called on Denfield. This end on this side jumped into the neutral zone. Watch on that replay. That end jumped and it'll be five yards given to the Wolverines. Six penalties in this quarter called against Duluth Denfeld. First and five. Here's Dojan throwing the ball underneath to Bittman with the completion, and Bittman gets inside the 15 yard line. Watch on this replay. Wide open, right in the seam. Here's Dojan giving it off. The ball carrier coming this way. That is Burris. Jake gets inside the 15 to about the 14. Gain of about two. Brought down by number 64. Under nine and a half to play in her first half. Six nothing Wolverines. They're looking to tack on some more. Jonah Looney, the center. Holcomb and Krenz are the guards. Madeline goes in motion. Here's a pitch coming this way is Burris and he only gains a yard or so. That linebacker got through real quickly with the stop. That's 58 Hudson Steger. Brought down immediately by Tom Brennan. Gave him the ball, one on the play, brings up a third and eight for the Wolverines. Eight of a yard, it'll be third down and eight. Yep, there you go. You got it. Yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's
Preston Rodberg brings in the play. Preston is a senior. Rodberg will come out wide to the left. Krempetic is in the slot left. Here is Dojin. He's just going to run. We got a holding penalty. The pass was incomplete. Holding on Rock Ridge. So they'll move him back 10 yards. We'll watch on the replay, see if we can pick up where the holding was. Oh, it looks like, looks like the guard on the uh, left side. So it'll be third down. I'll put it out near the 23 yard line. Third and about 18. Third and about 18 for the Wolverines. On their 24 yard line. Dahl goes out wide to the right. Here comes Krippetich now to the left. Rodberg's in a slot. Dojin, look in, look in. Here's a screen play, and it's intercepted and drop. Oh, man, it's right into the hands of that Dojin big lineman. Broken up by number 64, Ray Bandy. Watch on the replay. Wolverines had it set up beautifully. They would have gone almost for a touchdown in that play if they had just gotten it over that lineman's. Pass was going to uh, Manon and, and he had some blockers in front of him. So it's fourth down, fourth and about 18. They have to get to about the five yard line. Now we got a delay of game called on Rock Ridge, and that is their third penalty here in the half. Unofficially, I've got Rock Ridge with 127 yards of offense, Denfeld with 24. Let's see if they've got a play that can go for 24 or more yards here on this fourth down play. Here's Dojan throwing the ball long downfield and it's incomplete. He tried to hit Bittman and it's incomplete. Dojan now two for six for 38 yards and Denfeld will take over on downs. They'll start from their own 29 yard line. Six nothing, Rock Ridge. And the only score so far, Ryan Mannon in seven yard run. First quarter with 513 to play in the opening quarter. The placement for PAT was wide. Caden Polsto from the shotgun. Keeper going to the left side, no place to go. Lots of green jerseys. On the bottom of the pile was number 20, was Gunner George. Watch on that replay. There's Gunner holding on and getting some help. Coming up on seven and a half minutes to play in our first half. It's six nothing Rock Ridge. And now we've got a timeout called by Duluth Denfield. We're gonna take a break, six nothing in favor of Rock Ridge and we'll have more football after this. Teammates for Life. We are a nonprofit organization aimed at providing a healthy and purposeful life 
for those former players and military combat veterans, as well as their families who have suffered trauma in their lives. Our mission is to raise awareness on this important issue and remove the stigma of mental illness. To provide diverse services that include all forms of humanitarian efforts aimed at fighting brain disease, visit us at theranchteammatesforlife.org. Here come the hunters out of the timeout. Second down and long, postal from the gun. He'll hand off, ball carrier trying to get to the edge and he'll get some running room down the sidelines and they finally knock him out of bounds. That's Mace Moore, the ball carrier. That's their second first down. First down at the 45 yard line of Rock Ridge. Left half mark, wide outs on both sides. Postal short drop, throwing the ball long downfield. Threw it in a double coverage. He had Dahl 21 and Headley. Second down and 10. Hand off, ball carrying this to base again and. Now we got an injury timeout. Injury timeout on the field. I'm going to watch the replay first before we take a timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know. I didn't. Nope, I guess we won't. We're just going to take a timeout. We'll have more football action after this. When you're searching for a delicious meal that the whole family can enjoy, count on the experience and flavors of the Rink Sports Bar and Grill. As a locally owned and operated business, we have been proudly serving the entire area and our customers with only the highest quality of service and food that you need to take on the day. Dine in style and fun when you check out our trivia nights, darts, pool tables, 60-inch TVs, all while you munch on tacos, burgers, and more. Stop by today. So the injured player is being helped off the field. Number 44, Taylor Shikes. Six forty-two to go here in our first half. Six nothing in favor of Rockridge. And again, we know we are experiencing some difficulties with our stream tonight. Hopefully we'll have everything straightened out by our next telecast next Friday night, right back here at Moore Stadium as the Vikings from North Branch will be here. Here we go, third down play. And oh, the ball is fumbled, it's loose. Moore loses his footing. Comes up with the fumble. Wasabi Range College. Bring up a fourth and about 14 for the Hunters at the Wolverine 49. Fourth and about 14. A 
And now Rock Ridge is going to take a timeout. So we're going to take another break with 6-10 to play until halftime. 6-0 for the Wolverines over the Hunters. I decided to come to Masabi because you get that one-on-one -on -one experience with your instructors and I'll leave Masabi with literally zero debt. And for what I'm going into, I just thought it was the smartest decision and then I could also continue playing the sport I love, baseball. Definitely the fact that I could play baseball here helped a lot with meeting people and met a ton of cool kids, so I have no regrets. It's been a great decision. My name's Cody, and this is my Masabi story. Six minutes, 10 seconds to go in the first half. There's a good look at the Wolverine defensive huddle. Fourth down at the 49 yard line. Herberg is back near his 10 yard line. Here's the punt away. Oh, very, very short. It's a jailbreak. You better get out of there. And the ball is downed at the 38 yard line. And that's where the Wolverines will start on offense. First and 10. Again, let's check that offensive line. 52 is Carter Flanagan. 72 is Wesley Holcomb. 55 is Jonah Looney. 57 is Riley Krenz. 62 is Ian Lokin. Their tight end is 33, Will Bittman. Their two wideouts, 21, Gavin Dahl, and four, Griffin Krempetich. Burris, 34, man and 23 in the backfield with Dojan. Your quarterback. Great field position. Here's a little reverse play. The ball is on the ground but the Wolverines will come up with it. Loss of about five. Second down, well, it's about 14 yards to go. Rodberg and Krempetich come out wide, left. Here's a pass and it's incomplete. They try to get it to Manon in, coming from his wingback position. Doja now two for six for 38 yards. One completion was good for 15 and one for 23. It's gonna be third down and long, 5.17 to go in our first half. Coming up on eight o'clock on this Friday night. Manon again gets the hand off coming this way. He's got Burris in front of him throwing the block and Manon with a nice run and he's gonna come up about two yards short of first down. Now a big decision for the Wolverines coaching staff. That play went for about 12. Burris with a nice block. Ooh, looked like maybe a push in the back there. Rodberg will punt on this fourth and three. Snap is good, punts away, low line drive kick. Oh boy, there was a clip way downfield. Boy, you've got an injured Wolverine. Well, watch this replay. Boy, did he get hammered on that one. Let's see if we can go back on that punt. Well, I guess we do not have the replay. Well, that's unfortunate because Boy, that could be a season type of injury. We're gonna take a timeout. We've got an injury on the field. We've got 421 to play in our first half. Six nothing for Rock Ridge. 
and we'll have more football after this. I'm in carpentry. Uh, we do a lot of woodworking. Uh, right now, we're actually building a couple houses. I like the atmosphere, like everybody around here, all the faculty, they really like to help out. My instructor, Leo Lucas, he's, he's been in the field for at least 30 years or so. My goal with carpentry is to work for a larger company down in the cities. My name is Tyler Kemp, and this is my Masabi story. Well, it looks like the injured player is okay. It's Ryan Herberg. Hunters will start first and 10 from their own 30 yard line. And now we have a Wolverine timeout before the snap. They were short a player. Timeout Wolverine, that's their second charge timeout of the first half. So because we have another timeout, let's take another break and show you another sponsor that is making our telecast possible tonight from Moore Stadium in Eveleth. Four minutes and 20 seconds to go here in our first half. Six nothing for Rock Ridge. Postal, short drop. Now he's running, coming this way, and good pressure. Good and job. he throws it up for grabs, and it's almost intercepted by Jake Burris. Pass, reset, reset for Brennan. Reset. Falls incomplete, 34, Jake Burris. Putting the pressure was Gunnar George. So it'll be second down and 10. Again, the Hunters going with four wide, two on each side. Ball's on that left hash mark from the shotgun. Pass coming out here. But the Wolverines played it perfectly. Very, very short game. Again, number 20, Gunner George in on the defensive play. Clock is running, 3.40 to play here in our first half. Postal short drop, looking, looking. Now he's running out of the pocket, Bittman was after him. He's in there, some big trouble and balls fumbled, recovered! by Rockridge inside the 15 yard line. That's Gunner George coming up oh, with the defensive foul. play. It's brought down by a host of Golden Bears. Fumble Scoreboard. The fumble is recovered by number 20, Gunner George. Wolverines will take over. Look at Bittman forcing it. Now coming in on the other side was 87, oh, Isaac Flatley. Ball comes out. Gunner George is on it. Wolverines in business here in the closing three minutes of our first half. I think they're short a player. Here comes Bittman. I think they better take their final timeout, otherwise they could be called for delay. They're hustling, but 
And now they do get the timeout just in time. That's their third and final timeout with 3.13 to play here in our first half. We'll take another break. We'll have more football action coming your way shortly from Moore Stadium in Eveleth. The Ranch Teammates for Life. We are a nonprofit organization aimed at providing a healthy and purposeful life for those former players and military combat veterans, as well as their families who have suffered trauma in their lives. Our mission is to raise awareness on this important issue and remove the stigma of mental illness. To provide diverse services that include all forms of humanitarian efforts aimed at fighting brain disease. Visit us at theranchteammatesforlife.org. And of course, that last ad was sponsored by the Eveleth Hockey Boosters that paid for that uh, last ad, the ranch. First down and 10 from the 14 yard line. Wolverines trying to punch in her second score. Comes in motion, getting the handoff. Some ball carrier, that's our Jake Burris. And he gets about nine yards. Looks like he's going to be just short of a first down. When you're searching for a... Second down and a yard from the four-yard line. Burris in the backfield. Burris moved. And it's going to cost them five. They'll put it back. That's the fourth Rock Ridge penalty here in the first half. Call start on the Wolverines. We'll bring up a second and about six. Ball goes back to about the nine yard line. Now double wing, burst comes in motion. He'll get the handoff, cuts back into the middle, gets inside the five, and he's about two yards short of a first down. It's gonna be third down. Coming up on two minutes to play here in our first half, six nothing for Rock Ridge. Krempicic goes right, Dahl left, handoff. And that is Burris into the end zone for a touchdown. So from four yards out, touchdown as we watch on the replay. Nice blocking. Twelve nothing Rock Ridge. And they're gonna go for the two point conversion. Again next Friday night, it'll be the North Branch Vikings here at Moore Stadium taking on Rock Ridge. Here we go, two point conversion. Dojan rolling left, looking, looking, nobody's open. Now he's going right side, throwing the end zone for a two point conversion, and it is good. Looks like Krempetich comes down with the two point conversion pass. Watch on that replay, there's number four coming away with it. And it's 14 to nothing with 141 to play here in our first half. Again, next Friday night, we'll be back in action here at Moore Stadium. Next Friday night, Duluth Denfeld will host Hermantown. Heck of 
Headley will kick off for the Wolverines. There's the kickoff bouncing around. It's loose. It's on the ground. And Moore falls on it. You know, that's where you take it. No, I got it. Herberg was down there quickly looking for that ball. And now Duluth Denfield will start deep in their own end. 25 yard line. Postal is four for eight, one interception, 25 yards. Dojan is two for seven for 38 yards. Postal from the shotgun, wide outs on both sides. Looking, 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 throwing it downfield and Dahl played. The position perfectly, he had the inside oh, position and almost came away with it. Watch that coverage by Gavin Dahl in this play. Yep. Second and 10. Hunters have only had 18 offensive plays in this first half. They've had two turnovers, six penalties. Here's Postal dumping off a swing pass, but no place to go. Looked like that was 23, Ryan Mannon in on the defensive play. One yard gain coming up on our last 60 seconds. Third and nine. Here's Postal looking, throwing the ball long downfield, and he overshoots his intended receiver. Again, Dahl defensively. Try to hit it, Newland. And it's fourth down. Now Rock Rich could get great field position. 38 seconds to go. Herberg is dropping back deep. We'll see what kind of pressure they're going to put on the kicker. Last couple snaps have been high. Fourth and nine. High snap again. And oh boy, Burris almost got it. And it's touched at the 49 yard line and that's where Rock Ridge will put the ball in play. Burris almost got and that. 49 yard line of the Hunters where the Wolverines will take over first and 10 with 31 seconds to play in the first half. <laughs> 31 seconds to play in our first half, first and 10 from the 49 yard line. Dahl and Krempetich will come out wide to the left. Mannon is a wing back. Here's Dojan going to throw the ball long downfield for Dahl. And yes. Dahl with the catch inside the 20 yard line. Rockridge. 
how to hustle now. And the clock will stop. But now, isn't that called intentional grounding when you throw the ball from the shotgun? I thought when you intentionally... I thought when you intentionally spiked the ball, you had to be under center. At least in the pros, I know. Second down and 10. Here's Dojan rolling right, looking, throwing the ball, and it was deflected. They tried to hit Dahl again. Check that. That was intended for Manon in 23. It'll be third down and 10. 15 seconds to play in the first half. Rodberg brings the play in. Rodberg now will go out wide to the right, draw single coverage. Mannon goes in motion. Here's the pass. And it's intercepted. He threw it right to the defensive player and hustling back, making a defensive play was Will Bittman. Watching this replay, Mannion was wide open. He couldn't see him, didn't get it to him. And it was intercepted by Kilroy. And there is Bittman with the defensive play. So we got six seconds to go here in our first half. And Hunters probably will just uh, maybe just take a knee. They'll, we'll get the second half kickoff. Boy, they're taking a lot of time to be just taking a knee here. Let me try a little razzle-dazzle here on this last play. Moore comes way out wide. And now we have... What do we have? Timeout called by Denfeld. And that would be their final timeout. So at halftime, we will have the uh, scoring highlights for you. We'll have the updated statistics. It's been a pretty good half of football for the boys in the green and black. Two touchdowns. Mannon scored in the first quarter. Burris scored in the second. PAT in the first by placement was not good. Two-point pass was good in the second quarter. Krempetic with the reception from Dojan. There's a good look at all the pom-pom girls we got this year. Here we go, six seconds to play. Wide outs on both sides. Postal short. He's throwing the ball long downfield for more and it was thrown to the outside where he was cutting to the inside and the clock shows half a second to play. I don't know how they could have stopped that clock with a half a second. Boy, it must be the uh, the Elvis Gilbert uh, girls tennis coach. Time for one more play, barring a defensive penalty. Postal 
under some pressure, and he's going to go down way behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of about 11 yards, and that's the way our first half is going to end. Crenson on the stop as we watch on the replay. Sengman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. We are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. When you're searching for a delicious meal that the whole family can enjoy, count on the experience and flavors of the Rink Sports Bar and Grill. As a locally owned and operated business, we have been proudly serving the entire area and our customers with only the highest quality of service and food that you need to take on the day. Dine in style and fun when you check out our trivia nights, darts, pool tables, 60-inch TVs, all while you munch on tacos, burgers, and more. Stop by today. I didn't get my degree right out of high school and I ended up getting married and having a few kids. My daughter, she was going through the college, she got her AA degree. She just kind of was like, hey mom, you know, you can do it too. And the professors are really encouraging. Everybody is just supportive. This May, I'm looking forward to graduation and walking with their support. My name is Desiree and this is my Masabi story. Well, once again, let's take a look at the Pom Pom Girls. We'll let you enjoy this next song before we show you the highlights in the first half. Okay, that's the Rock Ridge Pom Pom Girls. Now it's a time to take a look at our highlights, our scoring highlights in the first half. We had two touchdowns, both by Rock Ridge. Let's get to the first one, the first quarter, 5.13 to go. A seven yard run by number 23, Ryan Mann in it. So you see Manin comes in motion, gets the handoff. He's got Burris in front of him. Manin gets to the edge. Burris with a nice block. And he gets into the end zone for the Wolverines touchdown. The PAT was not good, and it was six to nothing. And then with 144 to play in the first half, Jake Burris took it in from four yards out. There's the handle. Look at the blocking up front. And Burris gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Then they went for the two-point conversion. And it was Griffin to Griffin. Dojan to Krempetage. And the two-point conversion was good, making the first half score 14 to nothing in favor of Rock Ridge. Well, we still got about five minutes or so before the teams will come back on the field. So we're going to take another time out, show you some more of our sponsors that are making our telecast possible, not only tonight, but throughout the entire fall and winter season. So we'll have more from Moore Stadium after this.
The P.S. Engman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. We are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devils sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports and has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741-9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. The way I came to Giant Ridge is my, my grandparents were born and raised in this area. And my wife and I, at the time, were living in the Houston area and wanted to get out of the city and see something different. And the job opening was there, and I was fortunate enough to get the job, and everything has kind of fell into place since then. I enjoy playing in the early mornings at Giant Ridge. Both courses have areas where the fog will hang low and the setting dew and just the fresh cut grass. It's, it's something every golfer looks forward to and those fortunate enough to have that first tee time uh, savor it. We have a great advantage with our staff and the employees that we uh, work with at Giant Ridge in that they take a lot of pride in not only the facility as a whole, but the job and it, the details that they perform in their job and how that fits into the big picture. We want to put out the best product we can on a daily basis because we realize not everybody that visits our facility is going to be back the next week, the next month, so we're trying to put our best foot forward every day because that may be our guest only visit this year. It comes through to our customer that we love the facility and love the product that we put out every day. I'm John Kendall, and this is how I help make giant memories. Here come the Wolverines back on the field. Fourteen to nothing in favor of Rock Ridge over Duluth Denfeld. Baseball score, bottom of seventh inning, Minnesota Twins on top of Toronto by a score of seven to three. The Golden Gophers will be on the road. They'll be in Colorado tomorrow for a noon kickoff. And our Vikings will be in Phoenix on Sunday afternoon for a 305 start. Both teams back on the field, 90 seconds away from our second half kickoff. Again, a reminder for our Wolverine fans, we'll be back here again next Friday night. Hopefully we'll have some of these technical problems all ironed out and we'll have another telecast of Wolverine football as they'll be taking on North Branch. And then we'll have the uh, final home game i believe that's the homecoming game on the october the 8th when cloquet will be here the lumberjacks high school football on public access channel 5 and masabi community television and of course we've got a full slate of high school hockey coming your way our crew will be doing about 15 my nine hockey games this winter along with Rock Ridge Boys Hockey. 
So we should have a pretty entertaining winter season. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, Rock Ridge, besides football, has combined in hockey this year. Interesting to see what kind of team they'll put out. Looking at some of the things I remember from a year ago. Rock Ridge with a solid goalie coming back. A couple goalies, in fact. Some linemen. About three, four solid defensive men. So I think it should be a pretty fun year for Rock Ridge hockey starting in November. Well, we're waiting for the second half kickoff. The Wolverines will kick off. Again, the uh, total offense. Now, this is unofficial. 178 yards for the Wolverines and 38 yards for the Hunters. 10 first downs for Rock Ridge, 2 for Duluth Denfield. Again, the penalties. Six penalties on Denfield in that first half, four on Rock Ridge. Well, seeing we still got a couple of minutes yet, why don't we take one final halftime timeout as we still have a couple of minutes before the second half kickoff. So we'll take another timeout and we'll be back with the Wolverines kickoff after this. The Ranch Teammates for Life. We are a nonprofit organization aimed at providing a healthy and purposeful life for those former players and military combat veterans, as well as their families who have suffered trauma in their lives. Our mission is to raise awareness on this important issue and remove the stigma of mental illness. To provide diverse services that include all forms of humanitarian efforts aimed at fighting brain disease, visit us at theranchteammatesforlife.org. <laughs> Here we go. Headley will kick off for Rock Ridge. Lauren Brennan back to receive the kick from Headley to start the second half. What? We have to reset the clock now to the 12 minutes. <clears throat> Again, it was very, very warm in here, dry. Hopefully I'll be able to make the whole second half. I want to thank Darwin up on top. He's with the main camera up there. When, he, when we got here, it was 75 degrees, and right now it's down to 52 degrees. Steve Rockla is down in the truck, and I'm Bob Cohn. Here we go, second half kickoff. Wolverines will go from south to north here's Headley with the rolling kick and it's down at the 45 yard line and that's where the hunters will put the ball in play try to check some of the defense 99 is Noah Mitchell 55 in the middle is Jonah Looney 53, a linebacker is Brandon Pionk. Burris, 34, Manon and 23. Headley's the safety. Dahl, 21, is a cornerback. First play of the second half. Postal, handoff to Moore coming this way. Blocker, and he's going to get knocked out of bounds. At the 40 yard line. Fifteen yard gain for Moore. And that by far is the best offensive play so far in this game. Hunters have the ball at the Wolverine 40 yard line. Newlin will go out wide, left, man in the slot, or check that right, man in the slot, left. Here's Postal, give it off again to Moore. This time he gets slowed down. 
And they're finally going to stop him after a gain of a couple. Pionk in on the play. Second down and eight from the 38 yard line. Again, wide outs on both sides. Here's Postal, short drop. Now he's flushed out of the pocket, running right side. Avoids one tackle, we got a flag. Burris in on the stop, but there's a holding penalty coming on Duluth Enfield, so they're gonna move him back 10. The flag was thrown near the 43 yard line. You can see the hold right there, 64 gets called for the holding on that play. So they march oh, off the 10 yards. 10 yards ball. ball goes back to the Denfield 47 yard line. Second and 23. Postal trying to reset his wideouts. Short drop, looking, throwing the ball. It's almost picked off. Headley. Boy, Dylan probably should have had that one. Oh. But it goes incomplete, and it'll be third down. Third and 23 from the 47. And now we've got a timeout called as Duluth Denfield could not get set. So they take their first of three a lot of timeouts here in the second half. We'll take a break. 9.28 to play in the third. It is 14-0 Rockridge. Sengman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and Here we go, third down play. Rock Ridge with a 14-0 lead over Duluth Denfield. Hunters have only scored six points so far in the first two and a half games. Here's some pressure coming in. Pass off to Moore. He avoids one tackle, another tackle. Slips through a third one and finally goes down near the 44-yard line. Brings up a four 
gets here yelling at him, but it's 100 odds. Gain about nine on the play. It's fourth down. And Mace Brooks in punt formation. Herberg back to receive this punt. High, short. Takes a hunter bounce and roll and it's down inside the 20. And good special team coverage by the Hunters. And about the uh, Wolverine 18 yard line where they'll take over for 10. Wolverine's first offensive series will start from the 18 yard line. Now we got some kind of discussion. Not sure what this is about. Tom Hoftall, the back judge. Greg Staniger with the white hat on. Looks like it's something against the Hunters. Talking with Jake Burris, one of the captains. And he's telling them they want the ball to be put back up where it was. Let's see. Now the official will come over and talk to Matt Anderson, one of the co-coaches, co-head coaches. Still confused. I didn't even see a flag. Interference called against Denfeld. The only thing I could think of on that was that the ball was bouncing about five yards away from Herberg, and the Hunter player came down and kind of pushed him. Let's see if we can watch on this replay again. Yep, here it comes, and then there is, there's the flag, okay, there's, Herberg had no chance to field the ball, so they march off the uh, 15 yards, and first and 10 from the 33-yard line for the Wolves, big hole in the middle, oh boy, and a big hit on Burris. After about eight. Brought down by number one, you shot more at number 53, Jacoby Wynn. Looks like a gain of about nine on the play. will bring up a second and one for the Wolverines. Second down in a yard. Manon is the wing back on this play. And now we got some movement in the offensive line. Ball's tired on the Wolverine. We'll bring a second about six. So instead of being second down in two, it'll be second down in seven. Dojan will hand off. Burris gets over the 40. Burris got about five. So it's going to be third and a long three. Gavin Dahl will bring the next play in from the coaching staff. Now Dahl will go out left. Krampetich will come to the right. Manon is the wing back. Here comes Burris, fake to Burris. Here's the pass over the middle and it's caught by Manon in at the 45 yard line. That's a 15-yard pass and a first down. Dixon 
Check that down with number 50, Jackson Carter, in on the tackle. Boy, man, it was wide open. Nice play. First down at the 46 yard line. Here's Dojan giving it off to Burris, and we have a whistle. So the official puts the ball back on the Rock Ridge side of the 50. 6.46 to play in the third quarter, 14-0 for the Wolverines. Here's Dojin under some pressure. He's gonna go down and the ball came out. Let's see, is he ruled down or is it gonna be a fumble? Hunters think it's theirs. Did the whistle blow when they had him stopped? We're going to watch the replay and just see. Looks like the ball did come out. But they'll rule the play was whistle dead and Rock Ridge will retain possession. Mannon goes in motion, swing pass off to Mannon, a block on the edge. Mannon gets some running room and gets knocked down near the 45 yard line. The play goes for about 14. What's a nice block there. Right on the edge. And now we've got a injury timeout. Looks injury like one of the uh, hunters is down the field. 5.59 to play in the third. Timeout on the field. We'll have more football from Moore Stadium after this. The P.S. Engman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. We are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devil sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports and has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741-9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. Coming out of the timeout, there's Dozier going to throw the ball long downfield for Doe, oh, just off Gavin's Doe fingers near the 15-yard line. And it'll be fourth down and nine. Bring up a fourth and nine at the 145-yard line. Rodberg is the punter. Rodberg will punt. Sean Moore and Kate Dixon back for the hunters. Oh, the punt goes off the side of his foot. It goes out of bounds. Let's see how they're going to line this one up. There's also a flag on the play. Let's see where they're going to bring it. Looks like near the 29-yard line. But now they're bringing the ball back. 
We've got a holding penalty. I think it's holding. Let's see. Not sure why Denfield would take this. They'd get great field position with the punt. Again, another conference. Now they call the captains in. Now Greg Staniger is going to over to talk to the Denfield coaches. Holding on Rock Ridge. And they're going to take the oh, 10 yeah. yards and make them kick again. I don't understand that one at all. Where they would have had, they would have had the ball at about the 29 yard line. We'll see if Rodberg now can get off a better kick. Snap is good. Punts away. Oh, a much better kick. Fielded, fumbled. And the Hunters will have it in the 25 yard line. So it turned out better for Rock Ridge as now Denfield will start at the 25-yard line. Looks like Moore is injured on that play too. And I think we're going to take another injury timeout with five and a half minutes to play in our third. It's 14-0 Rock Ridge over Duluth Denfield. More football from Moore Stadium after this timeout. I didn't get my degree right out of high school and I ended up getting married and having a few kids. My daughter, she was going through the college, she got her AA degree. She just kind of was like, hey mom, you know, you can do it too. And the professors are really encouraging. Everybody is just supportive. This May, I'm looking forward to graduation and walking with their support. My name is Desiree and this is my Masabi story. When you're searching for a delicious meal that the whole family can enjoy, count on the experience and flavors of the Rink Sports Bar and Grill. As a locally owned and operated business, we have been proudly serving the entire area and our customers with only the highest quality of service and food that you need to take on the day. Dine in style and fun when you check out our trivia nights. Darts, pool tables, 60-inch TVs, all while you munch on tacos, burgers, and more. Stop by today. Back to live action. After the injury timeout, the Hunters will start back near their 25 yard line. Postal's really had a tough night. Six for 15 with one interception. Short drop, throwing it underneath and it's caught. But this is only going to go for short gain. 89 is Tyler Brennan. Peock in on the stop. Play went for about four, five. Right now, Postal is seven out of 16 for 40 yards. Here's Postal looking downfield, looking now, he's going to run, he's going to throw it, we're going to have a holding penalty, and the ball is up for grabs, and Brendan and Dahl were battling for it. we got a holding penalty also coming on Denfield. We'll see what the Blue Devils do. They are, or check that the uh, Wolverines do. They do take the penalty. 
It'll be a 10 yard march off. That's their ninth penalty for 70 yards. So far, I have Denfield with 69 yards of offense and 70 yards in penalties. Poe still looking downfield, throwing it long, and it's picked off by Headley. Or check that. That was Krepatich. So Griffin Krempetich with the interception and Rock Ridge is in business. There's a penalty where it probably is going to be a holding against Denfeld. There is no flag on the play. Uh, he threw the wrong thing. So that Rock Ridge is in business with great field position inside the 30. Looks like oh, about the 27, maybe the 28 yard line. This is Burris, the ball carrier. Burris, the ball carrier. Gets close to the 25. And we've got another Denfield player down. So we're going to take another injury timeout from Moore Stadium on this Friday night. Three minutes, 59 seconds to play in the third. It's 14 nothing Rock Ridge. And we'll have more football shortly. While we're waiting for the injured player to get up, uh, Brad Kern, the uh, trainer here at Rock Ridge, out on the field with one of the coaching staff of Denfield. Jacoby Wynn is the injured player. So now they'll put the ball in play. They'll put the clock in motion. It'll be second down and nine. That was Jacoby Wynn on the tackle after about a one-yard gain for Burris. Brings up a second nine for the Wolverines. Here's the quarterback, Doshin, coming this way on a bootleg play, and he's going to get knocked down as he gets inside the 15-yard line. Or check that inside the 20-yard line. And it's going to be third and about a yard. I'm in... Now Mannon will fall on his own fumble as we get back to live action. And it's a loss and it'll be fourth down. Fourth and about five.
under three minutes to play in the third. Comes Rodberg in the game late. Now he'll set. In motion is Manning getting the hand up, trying to get to the edge. Burr's got to throw a block, and Manning is going to get into the end zone for a touchdown. 23-yard touchdown run by Ryan Manning in his second score of the night. Dojan will hold, and Headley now will try to tack on the 21st point. Good snap, ball is down, Headley's kick is up, and this one looks good. Right between the uprights, and it's 21-0 Rock Ridge over Duluth Denfield. 2.35 to play in the third. We'll take a timeout as the teams head back upfield and waiting for the Rock Ridge kickoff. Come the Wolverines out with their kickoff team. Twenty-one nothing, Wolverines with the touchdown in each quarter tonight. Mandan has two, Burris has one, Headley's one for two with the point after touchdowns, and Krimpetich caught the two-point conversion. Here we go. Kickoff is fielded near the 24-yard line. And they're finally gonna knock the ball carry out. It looked like could have been Taylor Shikes. Watch on the replay. Look at how well the uh, special teams of Rock Ridge plays this. It was actually Tyler Brennan who returned the kick. Rock Ridge looking to go two and one on the season. Postal handoff to Moore coming this way. Oh boy, a block and it's gonna be a foot race now. Burris knocks him out near the 25. That run went for 38 yards, first down. Ball's at the 35 yard line. Check that 25 yard line. Postal throws it short and it's incomplete. So it's going to be second down and 10. Postal's pass intended for number 21. Kate Dixon falls incomplete. Yeah, that was an Yeah, that's bad. No one's single. Right. Yeah. Well, this guy here. 
Second down and 10. The ball's at the 25-yard line of Rock Ridge. have wide outs on both sides. Postal from the gun. Throwing the ball. Slant pattern and a nice defensive play. I think the ball may have hit the ground. It's incomplete. But that's a big hit on that one. Let's see if we can check to see who put that big hit on him. like it was Rodberg with the hit. Third down play. Wide outs on both sides. Man in the slot left. Caden Postal, short drop. Now he's going to run, but he's in trouble. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Postal is brought down by number 87, Isaac Flatley. Now Isaac Flatley, the junior, in on the stop. And it'll be fourth down. Number 57, Riley Krenz. We're in our final minute of the third quarter. Wide outs on both sides. Newland left. Brandon to the right. Slant pattern. It's up in the air and it's almost intercepted. It's incomplete. And the defense of the Wolverines come through once again. So the Wolverines will take over first and 10 from their own 25. 25 seconds to go in the third. I want to remind you, you're viewing tonight's telecast on Mediacom Public Access Channel 5 and our live stream at MasabiCommunityTV.com. And up goes to Burris, and he gets out over the 35 to the 38-yard line, about a 13-yard gain. That's probably going to be the last play of the quarter. They're just going to let the clock run out. It'll be first and 10 from the 38, seven seconds to go. And we've played three quarters from Moore Stadium on this Friday night. Three in the books. And it's 21-0 for the Wolverines. We'll have a fourth quarter after this time out. The Ranch Teammates for Life. We are a nonprofit organization aimed at providing a healthy and purposeful life for those former players and military combat veterans, as well as their families who have suffered trauma in their lives. Our mission is to raise awareness on this important issue and remove the stigma of mental illness. To provide diverse services that include all forms of humanitarian efforts aimed at fighting brain disease. Visit us at theranchteammatesforlife.org. I didn't get my degree right out of high school and I ended up getting married and having a few kids. My daughter, she was going through the college, she got her AA degree. She just kind of was like, hey mom, you know, you can do it too. And the professors are really encouraging. Everybody is just supportive. This May, I'm looking forward to graduation and walking with their support. My name is Desiree, and this is my Masabi story. Here we go, our final 12 minutes of this football game. Hand off goes to Burris with some running room in the middle, and now it's a foot race. 
and Burris got taken down finally near the 30-yard line. That's a 33-yard gain and another first down. Ball's just inside the 30. Here's Burris again with the handoff, and he's going to get near the 25-yard line. Second down and seven. Boy, unofficially, I've got for 190 yards rushing for Rock Ridge. Second down and seven. Coming this way. His man and then gets to the end, and he's going to get another one. That's a 27 yard touchdown run. will hold. Headley will try to make it 28 to nothing. Kick is high. It's up and it is good. And, the kick is good. and it's 28 to nothing in favor of Rock Ridge. We'll take a timeout as the teams head back upfield and we'll have the Rock Ridge kickoff after this. When you're searching for a delicious meal that the whole family can enjoy, count on the experience and flavors of the Rink Sports Bar and Grill. As a locally owned and operated business, we have been proudly serving the entire area and our customers with only the highest quality of service and food that you need to take on the day. Dine in style and fun when you check out our trivia nights, darts, pool tables, 60-inch TVs, all while you munch on tacos, burgers, and more. Stop by today. Once again, next Friday night, we'll be back here at Moore Stadium. It'll be North Branch coming in to take on the Wolverines. Manon with three touchdowns tonight, Burris with one. It's been a pretty good all around performance, both sides of the ball. Headley will kick off. Nice kickoff, taking on the run. Finally, they're gonna stop the ball carrier as he gets near the 50 yard line. That was Moore again on the return. Ten thirty six to play. Twenty eight to nothing. Rock Ridge over Duluth Denfeld. Here's a pass over the middle, and it is caught. Tyler Brennan with the reception. That's a 15 yard gain. And 
And we've got another Denfield player down. We're going to take another injury timeout. 10.29 to play in a football game. Rockridge 28 and Duluth Denfield 0. And we'll have more action after this. They're still attending to the injured player. Looks like this just might be a cramp. 10.29 to play. So we'll quickly just recap the scoring as we have this injury timeout. 5.13 of the first quarter. Manon scored his first of three tonight on a seven-yard run. Kick failed 6-0. In the second quarter at 144, Jake Burris from four yards out. Two-point conversion from... Quarterback Dojan to Krepitich was good. It was 14-0 at half. Third quarter, Manadin scores from 23 yards out. Hadley with the kick, making it 21-0. And then 17 seconds ago, Manadin scored his third on a 27-yard run. Hadley again from placement. And it's 28 to nothing. We're going to go back and see on this injury now. This is Brennan. He took a shoulder. And a good hard hit. Number 60 was Boydie George. First and 10 from the 35 yard line. Hand off to Moore and he's gonna be slowed down and taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Brandon Pionk with the defensive play for Rock Ridge. Watch on the replay, there's Pionk getting through, slowed him down, held him by the shirt and then got some help. Loss of a yard on the play. Hand off to Moore again. He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Ryan Mandon and getting through with the tackle. Third and long. And now Denfield is gonna take another team timeout with nine minutes and 10 seconds to play in our football game. 28 to nothing, Rock Ridge over Duluth Denfield. We'll take a timeout. We'll have more football from Moore Stadium in Eveleth after this. The P.S. Engman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. We are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devil sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741-9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. Mm -hmm. 
Here we go after the timeout. Third and long for Denfield. Caden Postal has gone the whole game at quarterback. Nine for 20, 55 yards. Short drop, throwing the ball, and it's into the dirt. It's incomplete, and it's going to be fourth down. Avondale defensively for Rock Ridge. Hunters will go for it, trailing 28 to nothing. Fourth and about 16, 17 yards. Here's Postal getting some pressure, runs out of the pocket, and Madden will hit him and take him down after a gain of about eight yards. And Rockridge will take over as we'll watch on the replay. Flushed out of the pocket, the quarterback Postal. But you're not going to fool number 23. That's a nice play by the junior. Looks like Rock Ridge is still short a player on the field. And they're going to have to take a timeout. Timeout over timeout of the second half. And we'll just keep it here with 8.54 to play. Looking at some of the stats that I have, of course, these are all, all unofficial stats. First down, Rock Ridge with 15. Duluth Denfield has five. Unofficially, I have Rock Ridge rushing 31 times for 217. Denfield, 17 rushes for 68. Doja in the quarterback, five for 13, 97 yards. Postal of Denfield is nine for 21 for 55 yards. Doja has had one interception and Postal has had two. Two turnovers in the game. They were both by Denfield, an interception and a fumble, or check that, two interceptions, that is, and penalties. Denfield with nine for 70, and Rock Ridge has seven for 45. Got a penalty on the play. It'll cost Rock Ridge five. First and 15. First. And Herberg was the ball carrier. Check that, Herberg on the carry. Brought down by number 22, Luke Pearson. And number 79, Reese Bowles. Gave him about seven on the play, brings up the second and eight. For the second down and eight for Rock Ridge. Clock is continuing to run, but not quite fast enough. 8.15 to play. Inside handoff coming back this way. Is it Herberger again? It is. Herberger got the carry. 86, John Biskin on the tackle. Third and about two. Mannon comes in motion. Mannon gets the handoff. He fumbled the ball, and it's recovered by Denfeld. Over first and 
Boy, he never seemed to have that handoff that time. Just didn't seem. And now with the turnover, first one on Rock Ridge. Coming in defensively now for Rock Ridge is number 10, James Toman. Coming to the bench is Jake Burris. He's had an outstanding game. Trying to see who else. I think they made a few other changes. Try to pick out some of those numbers. And now we've got another timeout called by Denfield. That's their third timeout here of the second half. 7.35 to play. It'll be first down and 10 for Denfield when we come back. But we'll take a timeout and we'll have more action from more stadium after this. Wasabi Range College is, I think, the perfect college for a traditional or non-traditional student. I came here to start my nursing career. I, I really like being able to work with people rather than being secluded. Uh, being able to help people heal them, that makes a difference, wearing your heart on your sleeve. My name is Becky, and this is my Masabi story. And we want to thank Masabi Range, another fine sponsor that have been with us for, boy, it's got to be close to 20 years. I want to thank Brenda Kachiever. Brenda just retired, and boy, always contacted her, and she was right there every single year being a proud sponsor of Masabi Community Television. Here's some offensive changes now, and the ball carrier was Dylan Allen, junior running back. Quarterback now is Wyatt Hinderman, number nine. That play went for seven. Hinderman from the gun. Oop, all kinds of motion. That's their 10th penalty of the night. 75 yards have been marched off against Duluth Denfield. Second down and seven. And the ball carrier is 31 Allen. Lot of green jerseys in on the stop. Try to pick up some of these clean jerseys. 36 is Levi Flatley, a freshman. For 30 is Jake Neary, another freshman. 50 in the middle is Everett Oakland, a junior. Third down, handoff coming this way. And boy, again, the Wolverines have just played such a strong defensive game. Number 22, Luke Pearson on the carry. Jake Neary with the defensive play. Loss of six on that play, it'll be fourth down. 73 in the game is Tanner Irish, a sophomore. Now coming in is 66, Jeffrey Thiel, a junior. Fourth down play. There's a long pass downfield and it is incomplete. Tended receiver was number 12, Mace Brooks. Flag on the play, legal procedure. So it was called before the pass. So they'll march off five yards. 11 penalties, 80 yards tonight. I don't know. I don't know. 
Hinderman from the gun. Here's a long pass downfield and it is incomplete. Wolverines will take over first and 10 from their own 49 yard line. 5.01 to go in our football game. Wolverines are going to go to 2 and 1 on the season, and next Friday night they'll host North Branch. North Branch coming in to tonight was two wins and no losses, and they were playing Mora. Coleman is now the quarterback. James is a sophomore on a keeper, and he's going to get taken down a couple yards behind the line. Check also some. And the offensive line number 54 is Jake Rice, a ninth grader. Second down and 12. Here's an inside handoff. And a lot of running room. That's Ian Mickledge, and he's going to go all the way for a touchdown. Fifty-four yard touchdown run. Let's watch on this replay. Handoff went to fifteen and then to seventeen. And now it's just a foot race. Avoids that tackle. Fifty-four yards. He'll go for two. And hand off and getting in for the two point conversion was Connor Morcom, a freshman. And that makes it 36. 36 to nothing. So it's 36 to nothing. And now because of the score differential of more than 35 in the fourth quarter, the clock will be in running time. Clock will start once the ball gets kicked. Thirty-six to nothing. Six nothing after the first quarter. Fourteen at halftime. Twenty-one zip after three. And Manninen and Mikulich have scored here in the final quarter. Headley with a. Point after touchdown by kick and Morecambe just scored on a run. There's the kickoff. Fielded near the 22-yard line. And finally taken down inside the 20. Dylan Allen returned that one.
That's a 58-yard return. First and 10 from the 20. Oh, we got some movement. Five more yards. Man, they've just made so many mistakes tonight to Luke Denfield. That's their 12th flag. 12th time that they've marched yards off against Duluth Denfield tonight. And off the ball, Kerry getting to the edge, and he's going to get into the end zone and score a touchdown. Number 22, Luke Pearson scoring. That's a 25-yard touchdown run. Thirty-six to six. They'll go for two. Pass is incomplete. So we'll take a timeout. Two fifty-seven to play. Thirty-six to six is our score in favor of Rock Ridge, and we'll have more football from Moore Stadium after this timeout. I'm in carpentry. Uh, we do a lot of woodworking. Uh, right now, we're actually building a couple houses. I like the atmosphere, like everybody around here, all the faculty, they really like to help out. My instructor, Leo Lucas, he's, he's been in the field for at least 30 years or so. My goal with carpentry is to work for a larger company down in the cities. My name is Tyler Kemp and this is my Masabi story. So the Hunters finally get on the scoreboard. That's their second touchdown of the year. Again, both teams will be back in action next week. Rock Ridge will be hosting North Branch right here at Moore Stadium. And Denfield will be hosting Hermantown. That game will be played at Public School Stadium. Waiting for Denfield to break huddle. Thirty-six to six. Number thirty-three, Austin Whip, kicking out for the. Hunt. Both teams have a lot of new players on the field. Fielded on the run near the 25-yard line. Let's see, we'll check. See, 32 return that. That is Connor Morcom, as you see him returning it out over the 40 to the 43. We're in running time, 36 to six. Handoff goes to Max Williams. He gains a couple yards. Inside two minutes to play in our game. At the end of the game, we'll take just a short time out and come back quickly and recap the scoring, and we'll show you the second half touchdowns. We got a holding penalty coming on Rock Ridge. Pass was incomplete. 
Is it holding or is it a face mask? Looked like the official. Yep. Holding on the hunters. They'll march off. This is going to be, I think, a 15 yarder, isn't it? Nope, only a five. Five yard penalty results in a second about three for the Wolverines. Into our final minute. Again, the clock is in running time. It's 36 to six. Here's Tolman, handoff, ball carry coming this way. We got another holding penalty coming or something called by the umpire. Number 32, Connor Morcom on the Morcom, carrier. the ball carrier. I think that's going to be the last play. They won't even have to have another play. Holding against the Wolverines. Referee went like this. They march off the 10. See if the Wolverines hustle up, have a last play or not. Trying to quickly get it off, we're down to seven seconds. One more play, pass was incomplete, and our football game is in the books. And Rock Ridge has defeated Duluth Denfield by a final score of 36 to six. I'll take a minute timeout or so and come back and recap the statistics and our second half scoring. P.S. Engman Agency is a family-owned business that has served the area with compassion and quality service for over 100 years. We are grateful for their fine support of Blue Devil Sports on Channel 5. Starkovich Distributing Company in Virginia has been a longtime Blue Devil sponsor on Channel 5 Television Sports has been a big contributor to the economic climate on the Iron Range for over 70 years. Call 741-9061 when you're looking for someone to supply your beverage needs. Well, let's quickly look at our final statistics and our scoring in the second half. Rock Ridge had 15 first downs. Denfield had six. Again, these are all unofficial. Rock Ridge had 35 rushes for 229, while Denfield 21 rushes for 95. In the passing department, five for 14 were the quarterbacks for Rock Ridge for 97 yards. So they had 326 yards of total offense and Denfield quarterbacks finished nine for 22 for 55 yards. They had 150 yards of total offense. Rock Ridge with one turnover, Denfield had two penalties Rock Ridge with nine for 60, and Denfield had 13 for 95 yards. Recap the scoring quickly. We'll show you the last touchdowns. In the first half, Mandan from seven yards. It was six nothing. 144 to go in the second. Burris from four yards out. Krimpenich caught the two yard, two point conversion. 14 nothing at halftime. Let's move to the second half then. At 235, Ryan Manninen scored from 23 years out. That was his second score of the night. There's a handoff, and Burris leads the way. Manninen reads it and gets into the end zone. Headley's kick made it 21 to nothing. 
We then get to the fourth quarter at 10.46 of the fourth quarter. Manning scores his third of the night, a 27-yard touchdown run. This time it was Herberg leading the way, and there goes Manning into the end zone. Headley with the PAT, it was 28 to nothing. Then at 4.11 to go, Ian Mikulic scored a 54-yard sprint. Couple handoffs on his play. There's the handoff to 17 and he gets out around the corner. Voids one tackle and gets into the end zone. Connor Morcom then on a two point conversion, making it 36 to nothing. And then finally at 2.57 to go, Luke Pearson on a 25 yard run for Denfield. And their two point conversion failed, making the final score. 36 to 6 in favor of Rock Ridge. Well, next up for Denfield, they'll host Hermantown on the 24th at Public School Stadium. Next up for Rock Ridge, right here at Moore Stadium next Friday night against North Branch. We will have that game for you, 7 o'clock kickoff. It'll be the Vikings and the Wolverines next Friday night right here from Moore Stadium. So that'll do it. I want to thank Darwin Aller up on top of the press box with the main camera. Steve Rockla down in the truck. I'm Bob Cohn with the play-by-play. -play. Once again, our final score tonight, Rock Ridge 36 and Duluth Denfeld 6. Good night, everyone.